Hi, and thank you for joining me. In this video, you're going to learn how to start a Revit project. We'll begin with a project template so our project standards are in place. You'll learn how to set up work sharing so other team members can access the model once we're done setting it up. We'll then discuss linking the architecture model so it's positioned correctly. Finally, we'll link the architecture model in so we have something to reference when we start modeling. Let's get started. When starting a project, the most important step is to start with the correct template. Templates provide you with a starting point for your project. Your template can include view templates, loaded families, and defined settings such as units, text styles, dimension styles, fill patterns, line styles, and so much more. Starting with the standard Office template is a great way to enforce Office standards. It provides you with the opportunity to hit the ground running so you don't have to think about all that stuff every time you start a new project. Revit ships with a bunch of templates and we store them on our X drive. Now that location means nothing to you unless of course you work in my office. But if you don't, your office may have a designated location as well and if so, just navigate to that location and choose the same template. I'm using the system default template. If your office doesn't have a designated spot, Revit installs the default template files here. Once you select the correct template, click OK. This opens a blank view with the exception of elevation markers. Now, not all templates have elevation markers in floor plan views, and not all elevation markers look the same. It will all depend on office standards. Working in an office environment usually means you're sharing work between staff members. Well, Revit is set up to work in this environment through work sharing, and it allows team members to work in a single project model at the same time. Basically, work sharing works like this. We create one central model that is located on a shareable server. Team members make copies of the central model and place the copied model on their workstation. This creates a parent-child relationship between the two models. Revit maintains communication between the models through periodic synchronizations performed by team members. Work sets are a collection of elements in a work shared project. For MEP, we create work sets based on systems. For example, HVAC, electrical, or plumbing. We also create work sets for linked models or CAD files. Creating a work shared model requires you to create at least one work set. We, of course, create more than one, but you must have at least one. For older versions of Revit, this process looks a little different, but the outcome is the same. To create a work shared project in 2017, click the Collaborate tab and then Collaborate on the Manage Collaboration panel. This brings up the Collaborate dialog. You have two options here. The default selection is to collaborate over a LAN or a WAN. This is the most common method of work sharing and the same one we discussed a bit earlier. The other option is to collaborate using Autodesk's cloud. This method uses a service called A360 and is intended to provide access to teams in diverse places and or different domains. We're going to select the most common method to collaborate over our wide area network and click OK. If you haven't saved your project already, Revit will ask you to do so. Now, clicking the Work Set button at the bottom below the drawing area will bring up the Work Sets dialog. Revit creates two work sets automatically, Shared Levels and Grids and Work Set 1. We need to add a few more so we don't have to think about doing it later when we're deeply involved in our design. Like I said before, we create work sets based on systems, so we're going to create five more work sets. Click the New button to do that and name the first one HVAC. Click OK, then repeat the same process to create the other four. Don't forget to add the work set for the linked model. Now once you're done creating work sets, click OK to get out of the dialog. Click Yes to make the ArcLink work set the active work set. Now, this is the first time the project has been saved since work sharing was enabled, so Revit wants to make sure we really want to do this. Go ahead and click Yes here. We need to sync the model and relinquish ourselves from the user-defined work sets. This will free up the elements that have been assigned to these work sets so others can work on them. 
Once the sync is complete, you can go ahead and close the project. After closing out of the project, click the Open button on the Quick Access Toolbar and navigate to the project you just saved. Now when you select it, the Create New Local box is checked. If it isn't, then you did something wrong and you need to redo the steps we just covered. You're now in your very own local file of the project. You'll also notice that the Sync button is now active on the Quick Access Toolbar. Click this to sync your changes to Central. This process also downloads changes others have made to the central model to your local so everyone is up to date. You no longer work in a bubble. Congratulations. Changes you make, others will see and vice versa. It's easy to step on each other's toes if you don't understand this concept. Everyone is essentially working with the same elements, so communication is key in this environment. Okay, now let's get some context in here so we can start modeling some systems. Make sure the current work set is set to arc link. On the ribbon, you'll see a tab labeled insert. There are a number of panels under that tab. Let's just focus on the link panel for this exercise. To link a model, first click the Revit link button. Now navigate to the saved location of the model you want to link. Now the positioning option at the bottom of the dialog is very important. Revit works with Cartesian coordinates just like AutoCAD. You want all the models to line up when you're working so everyone is coordinated. Positioning should be set to Auto Origin to Origin. This means the origins of both models are aligned. Now this is extremely important because this model at some point will be linked back into the architecture model so the architect can make sure everything is coordinated. That is the job of the architect after all. Okay, now that we have the model in, we have a couple of things to do before we start modeling. We need to get to an elevation or section view for this next part. If you double click on the view part of the elevation, Revit will open that view for you. It's also in the project browser, but since you're here, it's faster to get to the view by double clicking the elevation. Okay, I think this is a good stopping point for this video. We covered some new stuff, and some of the stuff can be confusing, so here's a summary of what we talked about. Always start with the correct template. Once you've got the project started correctly, it's a good idea to make it work shared so others on the team will have access to it. Now, part of that process is creating the standard work sets of your office. We discussed work sets based on systems such as HVAC. Make sure you're checking the current work set often because from the point you create work sets, all elements modeled, inserted, or copy-pasted into the drawing area are assigned the current work set. When linking Revit models, the positioning should be set to origin to origin, so models line up correctly. Now if you follow what you learned in this video, setting up a project will become a breeze. So join me in the next video where we'll continue talking about starting a project. And thanks for watching.